Jay Powell's speech. Yes. The world was watching, but he didn't seem to say anything new. No, but I thought he gave a very articulate um, explanation of kind of what policy going forward is going to be looking at, right? Inflation is still too high. You know, we've had monetary policy actions that brought us into restrictive territory in terms of that. And now it's just a question of, you know, calibrating that to make sure that we're on a sustainable and timely downward path to 2 percent. So the commitment is there to bring inflation back down to 2 percent. And I thought he did a very good job of explaining sort of the risk management that we're going to all be undertaking in this next phase of policy. Well, you've been on record as suggesting that you haven't calibrated enough, that you probably need a little bit more restraint on the credit markets. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get more data in before September, of course. But when you think about sort of what, what has changed between June and now, we have a bit stronger growth than a lot of us had thought. Um, we have gotten inflation down, but as the chair said, two months data is not enough to be convinced that it's coming down. And then we have higher long term rates, which is going to put some downward pressure on inflation. That said, you know, in my view, you know, I think that really under tightening would be a worse mistake than over tightening a little bit because we can course correct that. Um, under tightening means that inflation could remain higher for longer um, than 2 percent for a little bit longer. And I don't think that's something I would want to entertain. I, the way I think about it is I look at sort of what our time path for getting inflation back to 2 percent. I wouldn't want to see that pushed out well beyond 2025, which is kind of in the cards now in terms of the forecast. So I'm going to be very cognizant of that when I put in my new forecast for the next meeting. So if you're confident that you could course correct if you over tighten, does that suggest that you think the uh, idea of a hard landing is at this point kind of off the table and the soft landing is the base case? Well, I have a base case of a soft landing in my own projections. And, you know, of course, we're always navigating um, the economy going forward. So you can't take anything off the table. But if you think about how resilient growth has been, I think it's been higher than m many of us had forecast. I do think we're going to have to continue to moderate demand. We need to see that moderation in demand to bring demand and supply um, into better balance. We also have had some positive um, things going on on the supply side. We have labor force participation that's moved up. If you look at sort of those prime ages, um, that participation rate is now above what it was um, pre-pandemic. So that's a good thing. Supply is adjusting. And, you know, we have the supply chain disruptions being more normalized. There's still some constraints there. But again, there's, those are improving. So we have both things happening at the same time. So that gives me more credence that, to the view that, you know, a soft landing may be what we're after. But we're going to have to keep monitoring the economy. Uh, the chairman also said today that growth has been faster than you expected. Do you expect a significant markup in growth estimates at the next uh, summary of economic projections at, at, the, at the next Fed meeting? Yeah, so I can't predict what my colleagues are going to do. I'm going to probably have to mark up my own uh, projection to be a little bit stronger than I had um, in the June projections. And, and then that's going to feed into what I think the appropriate policy path will be. Do you change your unemployment forecast, given the fact that unemployment is not doing what you've all predicted yeah. it would do? Well, we have seen moderation in the labor market, and we, we kind of need to see that moderation in the labor market, just as we need to see it on the product side. And we are starting to see that. And so that's not a bad thing. The labor market continues to be very strong. But again, we have to be focused on making sure that we're bringing demand in both product and labor markets into better balance with supply, and that'll be the way to get inflation down. The labor market has, as you say, loosened, and we've seen wages, uh, the, the wage growth start to slow down. But has that come down enough, or do you still want to put some downward pressure? Well, I think a wage growth is an indicator of where we are in inflation growth. So we don't aim to bring wage growth down, but it's still going up at a pace that's it's stronger than what we would need to see for 2 percent inflation. And I think that's part of the, what's going to have to happen. We will probably see wage growth moderate. Um, somewhat, but we don't really target that. We really target the inflation rate. Now, you've got uh, UAW pattern bargaining starting. Uh, it, well, it's basically started, and today the UAW took its official strike authorization vote. You have a big automobile industry component of your district. Are you worried about what comes out of that? Well, it's just a part of the what's happening in the labor market. So we look at all the data that comes in, and certainly that's going to be a factor that 
we think about in terms of what is it telling us about wage growth going forward? What is it telling us about the strength of the labor market going forward? So that's the context in which I look at it. We don't, in the Fed, sort of look at individual industries and sort of that bargaining uh, decisions. That's for them to decide. And then we use that as data. What's the environment look like? I just wonder, though, it, the, the automobile industry is so big, not just the big three auto companies, but then you've got all the suppliers mm -hmm. and the, the wage demand sort of trickle down. So then does that lead to trickle up inflation? Well, I think what we have to look at, we don't see any evidence that there's a wage price spiral. I mean, I know that was earlier. People were concerned about that. That's not what we're seeing now. We are seeing the labor market moderate and wage wages moderate. We just need to see that continue to be really confident that inflation is on this timely and sustainable path back to 2 percent. And we're committed to staying the course and making sure that inflation returns to 2 percent. Now, we know that inflation, at least according to all the experts, is going to pop back up a little bit just sort of mechanically. Mm -hmm. uh, how far would it go before you started to get worried? Well, you know, we, we have to get inflation back down to 2%. You're right. There's base effects in some of the numbers. And, you know, that's why I think the way I interpreted what Chair Powell said today is really to really indicate to people that, you know, one or two great readings on inflation aren't really enough. We need to see sort of sustained improvement. And with core inflation, which is what you take out the food and energy prices and you take them out because they tend to be volatile, that's still above 4%. And we really need to see that come down. And so we're going to stay the course in terms of our monetary policy, making sure that we are restricted enough so that policy, so that inflation comes back down. And then we'll also be evaluating how long to stay restricted. As inflation comes down, the real interest rate, or in other words, nominal rates adjusted for inflation, that'll actually be, you know, tightening. So we're going to be having to watch that as we go forward in this, you know, uh, coming months and, you know, over the next period. We went uh, from monthly inflation rates of six tenths to five tenths to four, we're now at two tenths. How much higher would it have to go on a monthly basis before you thought this is not just base effects, this is something we have to be uh, more uh, proactive in? Well, it depends on, yeah, I mean, I, you're right. The point estimates are very important to look at. I mean, year over year, you know, changes are kind of a good guide. Um, so we look at the monthly numbers because that tells you about turning points and other things. But we also have to look at to make sure that inflation is coming down on that year over year basis because, you know, we're targeting year over year inflation of 2%. So that's kind of what we look at. And those monthly indicators give us a good view about whether things are moving back up. And then we look at the components. And as Chair Powell had in his speech today, he went through sort of the components that we're watching in terms of rent inflation, um, which then feeds into house price inflation and that service sector, that all-important service sector. Markets have raised yields in recent weeks significantly. Is that uh, something that is helping you? And would you worry if they started to go back down again and conditions got uh, looser? Are, are they where they should be in terms of the policy that you want? Well, certainly the higher long-term interest rates put downward pressure on inflation, right? So when we think about financial conditions, they feed into the financial conditions. So that means that, that we have to think about that when we think about calibrating our policy rate. I think one of the concerns that people have expressed about the higher long-term rates is maybe that's going to have a financial stability or a banking industry effect, adverse effect. And frankly, in talking to the banks in our district, um, we see them already taking actions to make sure they have adequate liquidity. You know, they're taking more um, caution in terms of their their uh, lending uh, capacity, their tightening credit conditions. And that's exactly the mechanism through which tighter monetary policy then feeds through to the broad our economy. So I'm not concerned about the higher interest rates. The market is determining that that's where they should be. But it's certainly a factor when we look into terms to calibrate our policy in order to hit our inflation goal of 2 percent. Going forward, this is all about structural changes to the economy, this conference. Uh, where do you see the U.S. economy coming out of the pandemic distortions? Do we go back to a pre- pandemic uh, era of uh, low interest rates, but low inflation and low growth rates? Or do we go back to a, a higher inflation, higher interest rate environment? 
Well, I think right now, you know, that's a little bit in the future. We don't have to think about that necessarily. But I do think there are arguments on both sides. And I think a lot of people say we just haven't had enough data yet to determine where our star is, that, you know, long run interest rate, um, neutral interest rate. And other conditions say that, well, if we have less globalization, if we have the Chinese you know, uh, economy pulling back, that may mean put upward pressure on inflation. And so I don't think we know yet where we're going to settle, but we do know that we're committed to getting inflation back down to 2 percent, and we're going to calibrate our policy. And, and when we say we're data dependent, we mean we're taking into account all the data, including the data that we get, that anecdotal information that we get from our district contacts, which really is forward-looking. So again, I don't, don't think we can make a determination of where things will settle down yet. But in this period, we know that there's still COVID pandemic effects affecting the economy, and we'll just have to wait and see. We also have AI, you know, new AI coming in. And in fact, the last session was all about sort of productivity growth and what, what that's going to be for the economy going forward. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty around those things. But for the, the case in point now, we just need to be focused on bringing inflation down. Uh, one of the issues with where you end up coming out of it, and I realize it's in the future, but uh, the housing market is basically frozen now because interest rates, mortgage rates are very high and people, so many people are locked into very low mortgage loans that they don't want to move. Are you going to get to a point where that unfreezes or are we going to be waiting a generation essentially to turn over housing and get the housing market going again? No, I mean, look, we're at a very restrictive stance on policy. We had to do this because of where inflation was. You know, my expectation is, is when we are convinced that inflation is moving down sustainably to 2 percent, back to 2 percent, we'll be able to move policy into a less, you know, restrictive stance. And as we do that, we're going to see mortgage rates come down. So again, right, there's dynamics going on here because we're still in a high inflation environment. But over time, right, we're going to be able to normalize our policy and therefore we're going to see other interest rates come back down.